Today on Rappler. Una Leaders Vice President Pinay, former President Estrada and Senate President Enrila trooped to Cebu to support suspended Governor Gwen Garcia. A social weather station survey says 6 in every 10 Filipinos expect a happy Christmas. Officials say survivors of Typhoon Pablo and evacuation centers will skip Christmas as they struggle to find food and water and to bury their dead. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Top leaders of the United Nationalist Alliance, Vice President Jejobar Binay, former President Joseph Estrada, and Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile arrive in Cebu Sunday to show support for suspended Governor Gwendolyn Garcia. Garcia is a congressional candidate of UNA. She was suspended by the palace on December 19th for grave abuse of authority. The trio's visit comes days after UNA released a scathing statement attacking Garcia's suspension as a, quote, power grab and a form of political harassment. Malacanang on Sunday cites an informal survey conducted by Cebu Daily News showing support for the government's move to suspend Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia. As of Sunday night, the survey shows 61.27% of its respondents believe Garcia deserves the suspension, while 34.29% see it as a case of, quote, power grabbing. Citing the survey's results, presidential spokesperson Edwin Lacerda encourages Garcia to follow the rule of law, saying the suspension has popular support from the people of Cebu. Garcia, who refuses to step down, is waiting for the Court of Appeals to grant her petition for a temporary restraining order on her suspension. CDN is an affiliate of the Philippine Daily Inquirer. It is a competitor of Sunstar, which is owned by the Garcia family. In a video message, President Benigno Aquino urges Filipinos to remember the true meaning of Christmas this year and asks everyone to be thankful for their blessings. Pagkakataon ang Pasko para magpasalamat sa lahat ng biyayang ating tinamasa. Sa ngalan ng buong pamahalan, nagpapasalamat ako sa lahat ng Pilipinong nakiambag sa pagtatag ng kultura ng katapatan at malasakit sa kapwa. Lahat ng ito ay sumasalamin sa tunay na diwa ng Kapaskuhan. Pagbibigayan pagpapakumbaba at pagmamahal sa ating kapwa. A social weather station survey released Sunday night says 6 in every 10 Filipinos expect good cheer this holiday season. The survey shows 64% of adult Filipinos expect a happy Christmas. Another 26% say they will be, quote, neither happy nor sad. The remaining 9% say they're expecting a sad Christmas. But SWS cites a significant decrease in the number of optimistic Filipinos in Mindanao, a region still reeling from the impact of deadly typhoon Pablo. It affects nearly 6.2 million Filipinos in Mindanao. Officials say survivors of a typhoon that ravaged the southern Philippines will bypass Christmas this year as they struggle in evacuation centers and continue to bury their dead. And the RRMC Undersecretary Benito Ramos says instead of presents and carols, thousands of people on the island of Mindanao will be more concerned with finding food, water, and shelter. Two families take refuge in an elementary school in Kateil who still plan to celebrate Christmas by simply praying together. 53-year-old Edwina Masidog, mother to eight children, says her family will have, has all the reasons to celebrate life. She says, quote, even if we have lost our homes and properties, we should celebrate the birth of Christ by expressing our gratitude that we are still alive. Standing on the spot where their chapel used to stand, 18-year-old Jason Gonzalez says Christmas must be celebrated. He says, hopefully we will have a new chapel in our village. Gonzalez adds, this will serve as a sign for the people to unite and to work together to rebuild our lives. Share the Christmas spirit by texting your donation. Rappler's Text to Help campaign with both Globe and Smart makes helping as easy as sending a text message. Pagasa says rain will fall in Compostela Valley and Davao Oriental on Tuesday, December 25. A bitter reminder of the typhoon that killed more than a thousand people weeks before Christmas. Disaster officials say the rain, triggered by a low-pressure area approaching Mindanao, could cause flash floods and landslides. 
The Weather Bureau says Compostela Valley and Davao Oriental will experience occasional light to moderate rains on Monday night until Tuesday morning. Bagasa expects the LPA to make landfall on Christmas Day. That is sad news for that area. The rain will come from the low pressure area expected to affect the Caraga, Eastern Visayas, and Bicol regions, among others. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today. A list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, more than 700 Palestinians have been killed in Syria since conflict erupted nearly two years ago. A Palestine Liberation Organization official says they've asked Syrian authorities not to drag Palestinians into the conflict. On Sunday, December 23, several rockets were fired into a refugee camp in southern Damascus, the site of clashes between pro- and anti-regime forces the past week. Syria claims its military is not part of the fighting and did not intervene in any way. At number six. The Middletons will have royalty as guests this Christmas as Prince William and his wife Catherine opt to spend the holiday with them. Queen Elizabeth II and her husband Prince Philip approves the decision. The couple who's expecting a child plans to visit the Queen's estate in Norfolk, Eastern England, later during the holidays. At number eight, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, is still at number one at the U.S. box office for two weeks in a row, raking in an estimated 36.7 million U.S. dollars just over the weekend. Globally, it earns $223 million, making it the biggest opening for any Lord of the Rings film. It collects $138.2 million internationally and $84.6 million in the U.S. and Canada. Box office watchers say it is the biggest December opening in motion picture history. The popular epic is directed by Peter Jackson, based on the classic novels of J.R.R. Tolkien. It stars Martin Freeman of British TV Sherlock fame and Ian McKellen as Gandalf the Grey. And at number nine, an ancient Chinese herb extracted from the root of a flowering plant called blue evergreen hyrangia is effective against fever and malaria because of its active ingredient called febrifuginone. Researchers find this ingredient could be pharmaceutically made as a molecule called halofuginon. It, halofuginon has treated fever from malaria infection. It's now being studied as a means to fight inflammatory bowel disease and rheumatoid arthritis. For the full top 10, visit rapper.com's The Rap. The British Sunday Times is suing Lance Armstrong for more than a million pounds or 1.6 million U.S. dollars over a libel payment made to the cyclist in 2006. The newspaper paid Armstrong 300,000 pounds to settle a libel case after previously suggesting he may have cheated. But the United States Anti-Doping Agency subsequently found that Armstrong led the, quote, most sophisticated doping program in sporting history. It led, a lifetime cycle, it led to a lifetime cycling ban for the Texan, who's also stripped of his seven Tour de France wins. Sunday Times is demanding the return of the original settlement payment, along with interest and legal costs. Singapore wins the AFF Suzuki Cup for a record fourth time with a 3-2 aggregate win over Thailand. Singapore takes a two-goal advantage to Thailand and holds on despite near-relentless pressure from the spirited home side. Thailand's war elephants threw everything at the visitors, but they couldn't find a second goal to take the game into extra time. It's an impressive third cup victory for Singapore's coach, who guided the team to the 2004 and 2007 titles. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories which people which have gotten the most votes on their mood meter. If you take a look, today's top story, Ed up, Binai, JPE, JPE, come to Cebu governor's rescue, 79% angry, 12% annoyed, 5% amused, 4% happy. Um, just a short while ago, this mood navigator was read, driven by what the Cebu capital standoff. But just a little while ago, we saw this story, the story that's gotten the most hits on the mood meter, shift with the happy growing. So this story, Risa Ontivero, Senate win like RH bill passage, uphill but possible, 56% annoyed, but 40% happy. Those happy votes combining with the happy votes of each of the other stories on the top 10. And you've got the mood for today, Christmas Eve. Today, most people are happy. 
Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Monday, December 24th, 2012. It is Christmas Eve. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Thank you.